All right. I think um, I've got something remotely interesting or entertaining. Uh, I got a 500i. Obviously, there's something missing right here. Um, I've done some pre teardown on this. I didn't want to do it, you know, live or anything because I haven't really disassembled this gas tank. I've taken the cylinder off, you know, and the, and the gas tank and stuff. Um, just I thought it might be a little bit awkward. But um, as I started pulling everything apart, this is uh, easy enough that the caveman could do it. Um, so let me walk you through my disassembly, what I've done. So over here, that's just your filter base, couple of screws, pop it out. Um, I did disassemble. Uh, I only took loose of that mount, the two screws right here. There is a small screw from the underside that holds this in place. This just slides right out. I did not have to disconnect any of this. You got your two fuel lines underneath there. Those get disconnected. And when you buy a new gas tank, you know, you don't get the whole shooting match. So here's our one of the issues we had with this when it came to me. And I said, oh, do you have all the pieces and parts? Was there anything left? No, I didn't get it. So I've got, I had to order, because when you order a gas tank, that's what you get. So I had to order that cover for the handle, a trigger, the throttle rod, the throttle lockout slash operator presence. What else was in here that I had to, um, the pin that holds the trigger in place, the spring for the trigger that helps it return and keeps the throttle lockout up. You know, that doesn't look like much, but here, let's take a look at this invoice. So there's the gas tank. That was something else for me. That was something else for me. But then the rest of these knickknacks, six bucks, seven bucks, buck 60, six bucks, five bucks, buck and a half, seven and a half bucks. I mean, all that shit adds up. So, you know, just, it, I get a lot of that was broken, but some of those knickknacks weren't. So, uh, anyway, so let's get a little bit farther on this. Um, but this, I think you can actually do this whole swap right here. There was a hold down. There's a little cover that holds the uh, primer and the stop button off. So we should just have some fuel lines. What I'll probably do is some pre-assembly right here in the bench with the uh, fuel tank. Uh, and another thing, this saw vise from Scott Coons. I mean, I, I don't use it every day, but for things like this where you need an extra set of hands, my goodness, it's handy. Uh, when I'm doing performance work, you know, I can have it in this saw vise, hook my wheel up and do all my degree and my timing, uh, you know, completely hands-free. Uh, so you're not chasing anything around. It's uh, super handy. All right, let's get a little bit of this tore down and put back. All right, while I got this off and it's easier to show, I've done this in some other videos, but if you have... All right, there's your damn phone. Come on. So right there is your oil pump or oil flow adjustment on your oil pump. That spring roll pin right there has to be pushed in. Because right now you've got, where's my scratch at? So if I put this on here, I can only go from that way to that way and it stops. So I'm not, it should go all the way to here. So what we're gonna do is, let me get that out of the way. Right there, I'm gonna have to set the phone down. But, and all you have to do is just tap that in, just use, I typically use this little T15 screwdriver because it's nice and long and skinny. 
just so it's flush. You don't have to beat the brakes off of it. Nice and easy. We come back in here and spring roll pin is flush with the bottom of the oil pump. And now you have full, you get a full 90 degrees. So with that limiter in there, I guess is what you want to call it. You're fine on a 25 inch bar. At a 28 inch bar, in a couple of tanks, you'll peel the, uh, the paint off the bar because the bar's getting so hot. It just won't oil enough. And they set them like that at the factory. I mean, it's not like we're doing anything horrible to break any laws or anything. It's just there as, I, I think it's for the European market. Anyway, um, again, having this stand here is awesome. Um, let me get the tank. I've got the few pieces together and ready to go. You'll have to reuse your uh, AV spring. If that got busted in the uh, melee, then you'll have to order a new one of those. Um, I don't know why the battery doesn't last long. Turn that off. Um, and it, the kit did come with uh, some new fuel lines. Not all of them, but two of them. So I put that on there and put this on there. Just, I mean, they're fine. This is like a year old. But uh, let me get this halfway set up and we'll go from there. All right. So I just slid the gas tank up, pulled the intake boot through here, and that's enough to hold this in place. As I was raising this up, I just slid the brain back into its little box. I have this one hold down screw in the bottom, but I've just gently, as I was putting everything back in, that group of wires goes in that clip. Let me move this out of the way. So you got your ignition wire there. And you know, steel's nice. I mean, all this stuff, is made to fit and the cool thing about doing this if you haven't done it is you know there's a natural bend of everything you know so you can tell where everything goes back um this right here is going to clamp in there i've got that buttoned up the primer bulb line goes towards the rear of the saw and the line from the back side of the fuel injector goes over there so let me button up a few things and uh we'll get the final assembly done boy this is easy yeah don't uh don't sweat this one they did a nice job making this simple and easy to work on i'm, I'm pleasantly surprised sometimes it can be a little over complicated all right so slide this on first there's a uh, three locator pins and then one clip that goes in right here so get this put into place first, slide that down. Then you've got to replace this and there's a screw that holds this down. This goes in, let me see if I can get you in a little closer. Make sure that this fuel line right here, here, if I need a point, so use my finger. Make sure that's in its resting place right there. There's like a little home made just for it and that it's under because this shield actually holds that down. So when you slide this in, it goes over it. Come on, it's pretty tight and it should, come on. I don't know. Maybe this needs to go on first and then this comes in. I'm learning with my, we're learning together. How's that? You know, I'm a pro about a lot of things when it comes to this stuff, but um, there's always, let's see if that needs to go in first. Oh, hell, we'll be right back. Okay. So this does go in first and then that slides on top of it. You've got one hold down screw right there. Um, this butterfly. So everybody thinks there's a carburetor on these or something like that. No. 
So just make sure you've got that ring that holds the boot open and that slaps in there. The throttle rod just hangs in there and double check all your wiring, make sure everything's pushed in and it's rifle holder. That stuff is important. It's not just style points. This keeps stuff from getting damaged and out of the way. All right, how's that look, y'all? Um, so all we have left now is the little small retaining screw that holds down the module, um, the four bolts, uh, and these are all the same. You got four that look just like that. One here, one here, and then underneath, there's a couple. But um, that's it. Um, you know, the handle cover just goes on it like that. I'm going to put the uh, air filter base on there and then slide that all back together. And uh, we're all, it's all back together. The only thing I didn't show you, this piece just snaps back in. It's a little trim piece. Yeah, take that off. And it's just there to protect what the filter cover doesn't. Um, the two screws underneath and we are good to go. Uh, I want to say total time, even stopping to film and run my big mouth for this, maybe 30 minutes. It really wasn't bad at all. Well, um, that's it for today. We'll, um, see you on the next one. Thank you very much for watching.